But God will say, you are esteemed. There will come a day of judgment where God will reward you. Reward you for not the things that you have done, but reward you because you, you have a relationship with Jesus and moved by the relationship with Jesus, your life has changed. And you're walking in the path of holiness and you're honoring God in every decision. That every decision you make in your college, every decision that you make in your life, that your decision about your life partner, decision about your career, decision about what you do with others in your life, in every decision of your life, you're honoring God. You know, you're, uh, you're not compromising His written word. When you do that, there will come a time. If not on this side of eternity, on the other side of eternity, on the day of judgment, God is going to reward you. The Bible talks about a day of judgment in Matthew chapter 25. It's, in fact, it talks about a day of judgment in the book of Daniel itself. In the book of Daniel, you know what? One of the things God, way God honored Daniel or lifted Daniel was to tell him secrets which no other Bible author knew. In Daniel chapter 9, if you read 24 and 25, if you do the maths, Daniel, God told Daniel 483 years before Jesus entered Jerusalem to be crucified, the day Jesus entered, would enter Jerusalem to be crucified, the Messiah. Can you imagine somebody making a prediction that stand, stood for 483 years? It's a proof of the inspiration of the Bible. The Bible is not just another book. It's inspired by God. And one reason why we say the Bible is inspired by God is fulfilled prophecy. And the prophecy of Daniel chapter 4, 24 and 25 was recorded 483 years before it happened. Jesus entered the ex in Jerusalem the exact day he was crucified. As Daniel predicted. The exact day. It didn't happen by chance. It happened because the Bible was written by a God who knew the end from the beginning. We have many critics of the Bible across the world. But I want to say to them, what would you say to the prophecies of the Bible? What would you say to Daniel chapter 9, 24 and 25? Predictions made 483 years before they even actually happened. And not only that, Daniel chapter 12, God says, Daniel 12, 3 talks about the uh, resurrection of the dead and it also talks about uh, the a day of judgment, Daniel 12, 3. And then it also says, those who call many to righteousness, uh, th those who call many to righteousness will shine like stars forever and forever. So some of you, you know, have not just come to this Bible study alone, you have called your friend. Why? You want your friend also to hear about Jesus. You want your friend to hear about, uh, to learn from God's word. You want your friend to become wise. And I want to encourage you, my friend, that you will shine like stars forever and forever. You might not be a star in your college. You might not be a star in the colony that you're living in. You might not be a star in your own family. Many people in your whole family might hate you or think lowly of you. But on the day of judgment, when Jesus stands before uh, and Jesus on the final day judges the world on the day of judgment you're gonna the Bible says according to Daniel 12 3 you're gonna be like a star who will shine forever and forever in his kingdom Daniel chapter 9 verse 26 talks about the day when the anointed one will be cut off cut off is that Old Testament word for crucifixion as we close this Bible study I want you to think of what happened to Jesus on the cross he was cut off, literally. Jesus has said that he will go into the White House and cut Barack Obama's neck. He was cut off several people's neck. The latest being a Japanese gentleman. Okay, what? I'll tell you what, about what happened to Jesus 2,000 years ago. He was praying in the Garden of Gethsemane. His sweat became like great drops of blood the Bible says his sweat became like great drops of blood it was just the first drop of blood he shed for you and then they, the strong Roman soldiers whipped him on the back more blood and then when he hung on the cross a cruel Roman soldier put a, put a spear on his side blood and water came out I, what I understand is Every drop of blood Jesus shed for your sake. And every drop of blood says, I love you, I love you. 
This is an event which Daniel predicted, the crucifixion of Jesus. The Holy One would be, the anointed one would be cut off. He predicted the exact day Jesus would enter Jerusalem to be crucified. He predicted the cross, the death of Jesus. Not only that, he predicted that the day of judgment that, that Jesus would preside over. So how would we respond? How would we respond? We need to make the God of Daniel our God. I want you to close your eyes. All eyes closed, all eyes bowed. My, my friend, my friend, would you make the God of Daniel your God? Is he your God? If he's not your God, would you make the God of Daniel your God? You have an opportunity today. You have an opportunity. The blood that Jesus shed for you on the cross will cleanse you from every sin. Maybe you have disappointed God. Maybe there are many things that you have done in your thought, in your attitude, in your action which displeased God. Maybe you have sinned against God with your hands. With your hands, maybe you fondled a person of the opposite sex. Maybe you lifted the bottle of alcohol. Maybe, I don't know, maybe you have done terrible things, unprintable things. But tonight, I have good news for you. The blood that Jesus shed on the cross will cleanse you from every sin. It says, I love you, I love you. It says this blood was shed for you. No matter who you are, no matter what your background is, that blood was shed for you. It is of infinite value. So it can cleanse your sin. Your sins past, present and future. It has the power to cleanse all of your sins. But you need to come to Him. It is of infinite value. If you are in that blood, you will be safe for eternity. In that blood, if you are in a relationship with Jesus, always, day in, day out, if you are in love with Jesus, if you put your faith in Jesus, if you remain in Jesus, if you abide in Jesus, if you walk with Jesus, then this blood cleanses you from every sin protects you from the attacks of the devil gives you purpose and meaning in life gives you a joy unspeakable full of glory so if, there, so if there's anybody here who wants to say Lord I'm sorry I want the blood of Jesus to cleanse me I want you to I want you to just put your hand over your heart right now all eyes closed. You're making a commitment to Jesus. I want you to put your hand over your heart. Yes. Some of you are doing that. Put it, put it over your heart. Don't be ashamed. You're saying, I want to come back to Jesus. I'm making a commitment to Jesus. Put a hand over your heart. Put a hand over your heart. Yes. And I want you to pray this prayer with me. I want you to pray this prayer with me. In a repentant, in a repentant spirit, putting your faith in Jesus. I want you to pray, pray this prayer with me. Dear Lord Jesus, pray this prayer with me. I'm sorry for my sins. Cleanse me with your blood. The blood you shed for me on the cross. Wash me white. I'm yours, Lord. From this day onwards, with your Holy Spirit helping me, I will live for you. Thank you for forgiving me. Thank you for washing me. Thank you that I am your son, your daughter. In your name I pray. And not only that, okay, we're going to make another commitment today. We saw one of the habits of Daniel was that he was a man who prayed three times. He was a man who was regularly, regular in prayer. And a man who explored the scriptures. Not only explored the scriptures, but a man who lived the scriptures. He was a no compromise Daniel because he was influenced by the scriptures. So how many of you will say, every day I will take time to read the Bible and pray so that it will start impacting my life. I want you to raise your hand. I want you to raise your hand. If you are saying after this Bible study, 
Okay, this is between you and God, but I want you to raise your hand still. Yes, like Daniel, I want to read the Bible every day. And I want to pray. And I will allot time for that every day, to read the Bible and pray. I want you to raise your hands. Raise it, raise it high, raise it high. Don't be ashamed. Many, many wonderful things happen. Many delightful things happen in our life. When we make a decision. It all begins with a decision. It begins with a decision. A holy decision. Raise it high and say, Lord, from this day onwards, I will allot a time to study your word. And pray. Every day of my life. No matter how busy I am, I will do that. I may not know how to read the Bible. I may not know how to pray. But I am making a commitment to do that anyway. With you helping me to do it. Through the power of the Holy Spirit. I am making this commitment. In Jesus name I pray. Let's pray for each other. I want you to turn uh, and meet your neighbor. Uh, we're going to close with this. Uh, I want you to uh, meet your neighbor, ask your neighbor's name, find out if he has a prayer need, and we're going to pray for each other. Would that be fine? Okay, I'm sure your neighbor has a, a prayer need. You can meet a neighbor whom you do not know. Someone whom you do not know. Uh, find, you know, the, and then you can mention your prayer need. Your neighbor can mention his prayer need or her prayer need. And then